Hi, this is Venkat Subramanyam, author of Pragmatic Scala from the Pragmatic Programmers. We all love programming languages, and I have my share of languages I really like, and Scala definitely is one of them. I want to share with you today some of the things I really like about Scala. For one, Scala has some really nice safe defaults. Let's consider an example. Let's say we are defining a function called foo, and I want to define a parameter, let's say a, which is an integer. And I want to simply go ahead and print that particular value here. Let's go ahead and call foo with the value of 4. You can see the value get printed. But what if I try to modify the variable to 22? Well, effective Java says that parameters to functions should be treated as final. Well, if that's such a great idea, why shouldn't that be the default? In fact, that's exactly what Scala does. Notice in Scala, you cannot modify the parameters to a function. Scala is very opinionated. It tells us that we shouldn't be modifying parameters into a function. Much like that, there are other defaults that Scala provides very easily. For example, if I define a val, let's say, and I'm going to say max equals 200, I want to print the value of max. Now I'm going to change the value of max to 400 and try to print it. Well, in this case, of course, we defined max as a val, meaning it's immutable. So Scala immediately uses an error saying I can't modify it. While Scala is very opinionated, it is not stubborn. It gives us the flexibility where we will definitely need it. So we could, for example, define a variable with a var instead of a val. Well, I call var as a keyword of shame because we're leaning towards mutability, but there are times that may be the right thing to do, and Scala doesn't stop us from doing it, as you can see. So we can see how Scala provides some really nice, safe defaults to use. Scala is also extremely concise. Well, one of the things we do in enterprise applications in a lot of systems is create objects and classes. Well, creating class in Java is very ceremonious. We create a class, constructors, and then of course, getters and setters and fields. All that we, we put together, well, why can't that be really concise? That's exactly what Scala does. So I'm creating a class over here called, let's say, car. And in this case, of course, I'm going to say year is final and integer. Now we are done. We already created a constructor, a getter for the year, made it final, and no setter, of course, because it's final. So I can create an object of car. You can see new car right here. And of course, I'm going to get an error because I'm not passing the constructor parameters in this case. Of course, if I pass a value, the compiler is going to be happy. And of course, we can print out the value of the year, and we can see that it prints out 2015. But remember, year is final in this case. So if I try to set the value of year to, let's say, 2016, I get a ready error. So you can see how concise the code is. Scala is also extremely fluent when it comes to creating code. Let me just give you one example. Let's say we are creating a list of values, let's say a list of 1, 2, and 3. And all I want to do is print the values. No ceremony. So list for each print, and you can see the values get printed readily. You can see how fluent Scala is for what it does. Scala has some really fantastic features. You can use XML as a first-class citizen. You can parse XML more readily in the language. You can use wonderful pattern matching, do lazy evaluation, create function values and closures. And of course, did I mention concurrency libraries? And you can use wonderful library like Akka very easily from within Scala. Well, if you're interested in learning about Scala, Scala can become an ocean very quickly. But to make good use of Scala, you want to focus on the good parts, the essential parts of Scala. Well, that's exactly why I wrote The Pragmatic Scala. Please take a look at my book. Thank you.